Hello, everyone. Welcome to the inaugural episode of the Phantom Zone podcast, episode zero. Each week, we run through the weekly shows of comics on TV and give you our fistful of justice. Outside the realm of comics, in part of space and time, lives a man named Hunter Davenport. What's up, bitches? Connor McGraw. It was me, Barry. Alan Muir. Alan Z. Arlen Haro. Haro is the best daddy. 2K Infinity. And me, of course, your host, Chris Smith. So, let's talk about Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. I'm ready, but I'll let everybody else go first, because I'm kind of new to this, so. So, holy shit. Did we, we, that was a really good season premiere. It was. Like, in terms of. Just in terms of, like, me being entertained by a TV show I'm not very familiar with, um, I was pretty blown away. Yeah, like, they took Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. and then they bumped it up an hour uh, time slot so they could air it a lot later and then have more blood and guts like you saw in the intro. That was something that actually knocked me on my ass because my my first impression with the show was season one, the first three episodes, was very, like, kind of clean and kind of sterilized. It was super sterilized, and that's actually one of the things that turned me off. I was like, this is so straight. And then, like, two minutes into season four and someone's, like, exploding on someone else's face. Oh, God, yes, that was great. I just have to ask Hunter this one question. Yes. Were you entertained with the opening with Daisy? Uh, yeah, I was. Um, <laughs> I, re- I rewind Hulu like three times. <laughs> I, oh, yeah. I love okay, Chloe yeah, Bennett. No. Hunter, Chloe Bennett is a goddess. Yeah, no. This one. She is absolutely gorgeous. Like, like oh, yeah. she her tops Karen Page for me in my book right now. And we, we all know from my Facebook that Karen Page is my end-all, be-all. It's your DC wife? Oh, no, yeah, that's your Marvel wife. That's my Marvel wife, but now I have a new you Marvel wife. You bastard. <laughs> You're just going to get gifts, just all of them. <laughs> you know what? I'm, I'm fine with it. Uh, anyway, yeah, um, so we didn't get to see Ghost Rider immediately. We just saw him kind of from a distance. Um, yeah. I like that. Yeah, they the else again. That was that cool, was... and Im- very immediately I got a um, there was a Punisher vibe I got from from uh, Daredevil yeah. season two, where he was. I mean, the the tension they dragged out in Daredevil season two was longer with Punisher because they built his presence up like a slasher movie villain, and yes. they did something similar with this, which I liked. Totally. I I, I mean, do remember when the first blood splatter splatter hit. I was like, I was like, I can see where they're going with this character because I don't feel like. I feel like in the comics, Ghost Rider is not as, he's not as kind of, like, slasher villainy, you know? He's just, he right. he kind of just, he's lumbering towards you, but, like, you can kind of see him coming. But, like, he's when he, when, I felt the terror. Like, say that again, Arlen? He's usually not, like, fighting regular people. He's fighting, like, demons and shit. Like, he's, it's, it was very weird, it, it, yeah. but it worked. I think that's where the Punisher vibe comes from, is that he's he's got this supernatural power, and he's exacting on, like, regular-ass humans who really can't defend themselves yeah, against him. Yeah, it seems him. very, like, Punisher-ish. Like, instead yeah. of them, like, they grounded him in the real world, like, rather than fighting the demons or whatever. They, like, really Which is funny, put him in there. I had to say, and I was I was saving this for this discussion, is that I watched that clip where he, it's the, uh, I'm not the one who decides, which then led me down our YouTube rabbit hole of where I was watching clips from Spirit of Vengeance. Yeah, oh, oh I've, 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 I have never seen that movie, and I have to tell you, I won't watch the entire thing. However, I did pretty much YouTube all the Ghost Rider sequences and Nick Cage doing his whole, like, blah, blah, blah transformation thing, which I thought was fan-fucking-tastic. Um, but even that, I thought, was – all the Ghost Rider stuff was cool as shit in that movie. No, that the, the Ghost Rider himself is the coolest part of those movies. It looks like everything it's else is terrible. <laughs> I mean, you're not wrong. Yeah, basically. I, I watched that entire sequence where he's like, the rider wants to come out, and I'm the only one standing between you and him. Yeah, like, I, I have a feeling they just gave him, like, a mountain of cocaine and just said, have at it. <laughs> just, here you well, go. Just here's the thing, and I'll do this, this is a quick aside about Nick Cage. A friend of mine uh, helps him take care of his reptiles. Weird, weird story, yes, I know. Um, and he can basically verify that Nick Cage is as weird as you think he is. I heard he's, like, really in-depth, too. 
yes. Hence why he takes all these weird jobs um, where it's all these directed DVD stuff and all this, you know, Netflix exclusive stuff because basically he's in debt and he'll he'll take whatever scripts that's put in front of him because he needs the money. Hey, you gotta make money. Number one of Superman on fire. <laughs> Wait, are, are you saying Ghost Rider is Superman but just on fire? No, Nick Cage lit like the number one issue of Superman on fire at one point, if I recall. Wait, what? What? He did that? I'll look it up. I'll look it up. I don't this is the same that. man who Sean Bean told a story about Nick Cage where they were playing, I guess, pool at his house. And Nick Cage had this gigantic ancient bear skull in his like <laughs> game room, and then I guess I'm not they were drinking, and it, and it accidentally got knocked over and smashed. And Sean Bean said, like, yes, he was very sad about it, and then he went into a field and buried it. <laughs> buried a cave bear head in his backyard. Yes. Why not? Nick Cage, everybody. Okay. Uh, yeah. Um. But Angels of Shield. Um. And again, this is very, this is like a reintroduction to everybody for me, so a lot of it was very, I was like, okay, who's that? Why are they, what, I don't know who, oh, Chloe Bennett. <laughs> yeah, that's that's how, like, that was how my introduction to Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. was. But I'll let you guys kind of just, I'll jump in when I need to, but you guys can discuss this more because you're familiar with it. Arlen, what did you think? Like, I, I about Ghost Rider or which part? Exactly? Just in general, like, I know you really like Robbie Ray's, I just, I'm very curious to hear your thoughts. I was, it immediately took me out of it because I was like, okay, this is not, this is not the Robbie we know. Yeah. And it became clear when we saw Gabe at the end. This is obviously like five years later, Robbie. This yeah, is, this is like down the road. Yeah, after after some shit's gone down, something's yeah. happened, and it's it's clearly the Johnny Blaze origin, not the. That's, was I was going to ask about this because it looked like like kind of an amalgamum of like Johnny Blaze and the new Ghost Rider where it looks like the new Ghost Rider human mixed with old Johnny Blaze um kind of standard spooky skull. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Definitely. He's not possessed by a Satanist who's a serial killer in this, definitely. Cuz he yeah, says he's... says vengeance or he says it makes some reference either in this episode or preview for he's... next episode. He says he says you got a little bit of the devil in you too. Right. Yeah, which is badass. Well, well, that you, well, I've been watching this show since it first started. Yeah, same. I went through everything. Hydra. Hydra again. <laughs> Hydra for a third time. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Mr. Hyde. And I really like how the show kind of soft reboots itself every year. Or every oh, yeah, season. yeah. One thing that a critic could tear apart is Fitz's brain damage that happens in season yeah. one. It's like they just retconned it without yeah. retconning. Yeah, that was kind of weird. I, I remember I started season two about, like, like Saturday, I think. And, like, I remember, like, being immediately weirded by weirded out by um, how different Fitz seemed. Because it was just, like, I don't remember that him getting brain damage. It didn't, like, he didn't seem to get injured that much the way the season ended was him like drowning to almost death i guess the next season he can barely talk yeah it's strange i guess he had trouble forming sentences uh he mac was basically his aid yeah sort of (laughs) yeah i love mac yeah it was it was just off-putting i guess and this is stuff I've yet to get to, but it's fine. Like I, I said before, I'm kind of okay with spoilers. Um, yeah, sorry. <laughs> no, no, like I said, it's it's totally fine. Like, I went into Flash season one kind of knowing who Harrison Wells was and was still perfectly okay with when it happened. I was like, oh my god! You're not missing much on Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. That's what everyone's telling Like the first, I guess basically everyone telling me until the Winter Soldier uh, crossover, that it's kind of rote and just kind of like, yeah, here it is. Yeah, that's when they, like, it's like, when they decided, oh, we should write this better. That's what, and that's again. That was my trepidation with this. Like, I watched the first episode. It was like, uh, yeah, Joss Whedon, but like this again. It felt so. It's like, not really Marvel Joss was Whedon, like, though. Yeah, it's like he's present. Um, it's, I might yeah, be wrong. But one of my biggest stuff. issues with mm-hmm. Marvel TV is like Marvel will say it's all connected, and that is kind of a crock of shit. 
because yeah. they refuse. Well, I know they don't refuse. I guess it's more of a miscommunication with like the TV people and the movie people, and I guess Feige runs movies and who runs TV? That like Perlmutter. No, they, I, they, I thought they, it was Jeff Loeb who, who ran t- he, Marvel TV. He produces a lot of it, but Ike Perlmutter is still in charge of all Marvel except for the movies. They basically had a breakup in April, so they, they don't talk anymore. They don't communicate. That's why the Inhumans movie was canceled. Oh, what? Yeah. yeah I, I thought it was canceled. They talked about that on um, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. and, like, they completely quietly, They quietly canceled it. Like, it's just removed from their schedule, right. and, like, I was kind of excited to see Vin Diesel as Black Bolt, so... That that makes me sad, like legitimately sad. I know I um, felt but, when they canceled yeah, no, Fantastic back Four. That's what I was saying. Uh, well, mm. <laughs> yeah, I, hey, I, I I don't miss Fantastic Four at all. I don't think anybody. Misses I it. do. But, uh, I no, it's still real to me. Marvel. Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> but no, Marvel TV feels so like that. You know, they'll make acknowledge. Like I heard someone name drop Ultron in an episode I was watching, and I'm like, okay, that's like it's tepid, and even the Netflix stuff get, is guilty of that, where it's like it's the movie's presence will kind of loom over the show, but there's never a a solid thread that connects uh, any of the shows to the movies anymore because it just feels so separate. Yeah, yeah and when I, it is, it's just yeah, me. That it was uh, in the movie verse, Agent Coulson is dead, even though he exists in the Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Yeah. He's gone back ever. I don't think he's coming back either. And that sucks too because, like, he... And obviously his moment in The Avengers was effective because everyone loves agent colson he's funny as hell and it's also weird that i can't really get behind the logic of like no one in the avengers knows that colson's still around somewhere nobody you're telling me even tony stark like, doesn't know agents of shield doesn't exist within the t- the movie universe but it does exist like what the hell well yeah because like, 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 it does I saw, yeah i saw sam jackson show up at the end of uh, season one episode one and he Flexed yeah. Coulson, and then like uh uh, uh what's her uh, damn it um, Colby Smolders uh Maria yes. Hill, yes she shows up from time to time. That's like the only really connection you get. Well, yeah, but before Age of Ultron came out, Doctor List was a care was it was the same actor on Agents of Shield and in Age of Ultron. What character? Doctor List. He was a Hydra. He was the guy with Baron Strucker. Oh, oh okay. Yeah. He was. They were really? trying to get get him. They were trying to take him down on Agents of, Agents of Shield. And oh, okay. they, is, they eventually get him in Ultron. The Avengers get him. The yeah, team, in, which, in the which beginning, I think is a weird little commentary on like how lopsided the the both the TV movie universe is. Like you can have an entire season, but then trying to get this one guy, and then he's captured in the opening sequence of Ultron. Pretty much. <laughs> yeah, I, I guess. Obvious at this point, it's having. I don't remember the actress's name in both Luke Cage and Ultron is, yeah, it makes oh, no sense. Oh, yeah. Uh, but anyway, back to this, this episode. Um, <laughs> yeah, like I said, <laughs> yeah. Just, um, well, I, we're kind of still I, talking about it. <laughs> yeah, there was lots of stuff happening that, I, again, I wasn't quite familiar with, but it seems like, I guess, Daisy's on is going rogue for some reason. I don't really know what's going on with that yet. I can explain that. Um, uh, Sokovia Accords, she doesn't agree with it. Oh, oh, okay. So then they're all right. That's some well, that's, that actually makes sense. Th- there is no, there's another that's, reason. That's from my understanding. Less... She doesn't. She wants to fight justice her own way rather than be government assigned. So she's Team Cap. I knew I liked her for a reason. <laughs> Let... I like her for different reasons. <laughs> we all know. We know. <laughs> yeah. Last season, Grant or. Uh, what's whatever his name is, the big tentacle head. Oh, I'm um, sorry. I'm sorry. Wet. I'm blanking on <laughs> his name. There was a there was a there was a there was a tentacle man. <laughs> um, there's a guy with a big sp- head. I gotta uh, speed through this fucking show. <laughs> I can't remember his name. For fucks. Um, it, it was the guy who it was the being that possessed Grant Ward. Oh, ah, oh, shit. What is his name? Basically, is he... that Ultimate Marvel trailer or whatever? That... No, it's not in that. Are you oh, about... he was in the Road to Civil War video that that guy made, um, which might as well be an official Marvel production because that video is marvelous. Yes, it um, is. That, I've watched that so many times. I think I've watched it six times for watching the movie. But, um... Uh, just... No, I think... I, okay, yeah, I've just seen Just a him. side um, step. Hive. On... Hive, yeah, Hive. Hive? Yeah. First, 
or before I diverge, Hive affected Daisy and made her basically whammied her into joining his side and being <laughs> oh being besties. Yeah, yeah, with the little parasite whatevers that he's made out of. And the show is fucking weird, guys. <laughs> it's weird. There was yeah, a, it was weird. There was a moment. There... One good part though, where he like ate like three whole people. Yeah, that was cool. oh, okay. That um, was the yeah. highlight. Of that but again, before we get too off track, um, I, I don't know how much there is to talk about like the standard shield stuff that was happening before, between basically between like the beginning and end of this episode with the full on Ghostfighter stuff. Like, I feel like that is more discussion more than like all the uh, the typical kind of spy affair that was going on. Yeah, yeah. Um, because once that that. Even it was brief. It was, I don't know, two minutes, minute and a half long, like, okay, one for television? That was damn good looking. Yeah. 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 Way was, better than I thought it was going to look. I was definitely surprised at, like, how well he moved, too. Like, Yes, it looked completely authentic. It didn't look like, uh, like, like it didn't look like Jeff Bridges. On that one scene. Yeah, yeah, it didn't look like Jeff Bridges' bobblehead from Tron. Um, no. <laughs> nope. Nope. And it, didn't, and it didn't, and it looks better than the first Ghost Rider movie, which I watched clips of too, and that looks fucking horrendous now. No, oh, yeah, it did not age well. No, not at all. And this was like, you could, there was, and the skull wasn't exactly like a contemporary one either. It looked like a combination of the, I guess the newer design with kind of the, the kind of cracks in the skull, and like, the, it looks a little more elongated and kind of distorted. Like, it doesn't look like a standard human skull. It looks yeah. a little more pointy. I was saying earlier, it looks like a hood ornament, kind of. Yes. Like, like it, it's got this weird, like, kind of like design to it. I guess the word would be like it's it's yeah. neat. I like no, it a lot. It has a, it has a style that is very uh, unique. I guess to this interpretation of Ghost Rider. Yeah, yeah kind of a little bit of like uh, like the old school Ghost Rider, where it's just a skull mixed with a little bit of the uh, current Robbie Reyes, like in the comics, where it's a little bit more um, pointy, kind of a yeah. halfway. Yes. I, I will say he looks a little bit bulkier than Robbie does in the comics too, because like he he is physically imposing. I can give you that much. He he, yeah. and I guess yeah. that's credit to. I hope it was Diego doing the uh, all of the work for it. But like yeah. even like his stance, just the way he looks around, like he he looks he, he looks he just everything about it was cool. Yeah, but uh, I'm actually yeah. excited for the episode of Agents of Shield after seeing that. Yeah, I'm totally. I've been just something I've never said before. I've no, I'm been... definitely. I, I basically was using this episode as like, a, I guess, to gauge my interest and see where everything gets to, and because, like I said, everyone tells me the season one hum, just like Arrow, um, that it gets progressively better. And this, if this is where the show is going, then I'm definitely going to speed run through season one through three and catch up because now I'm interested. Yeah, it's. Um, I definitely recommend going through it. I mean, it's not everyone's favorite show, and I get that, but like, I recently, like, when I started binging it, it like. It definitely, I, I have a appreciation for it now. It's definitely better than Peggy Carter, and I won't get into that right now because I know oh, I've never, wow. seen, I've never seen a single episode of Agent Carter. Look, I'm not going to get into it right now. <laughs> yeah, in other words, we'll get into a fight. And yeah, <laughs> sorry, I don't want to get into a fight. We're <laughs> <laughs> up. Harlan's like somebody wants a knife fight. <laughs> There's a plot point from Agent Carter that ends up in Civil War. Just saying. Does it really? Yeah. yeah, that's actually really neat. That is kind of I mean, a tiny one. Yeah, it's the, <laughs> the tiniest. Tiny. You probably wouldn't notice it unless you actually saw the season. Well, at least it's something, you know. Agent of Shield has barely anything. <laughs> yeah, uh, actually, H Peggy Agent Carter was probably the closest related Marvel TV show to the movies because it actually had one of the movie actors in it, and she has a direct relationship to one of the movie characters, so it's actually almost tragic that it got cancelled, but I've never seen it, so I can't tell it was good or not, so. Oh, yeah, I was pretty Con excited. Connor, you should look up uh, the, dub the Dub Smash Wars that happened between Agent Carter and Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Oh, I saw those, and they were fantastic. Oh, I, yeah, I've seen those before. Those are really Haley really Atwell funny. is also a goddess, by the way. Yeah. Yes, I agree. Yeah. Um, but so I, anyone got anything else to say? Yeah, is there anything else to discuss through in this episode? It's having the big Ghostwriter stuff, because that was what everybody well, was kind of hyped about. Let's talk about the other the other side of the coin. The uh, stuff with uh, Coulson, Mac. Oh, that. I thought we were going to the G word. No, we're, we're not there yet. <laughs> the G word? <laughs> Thank God. I'm not ready. Yeah, when it cut <laughs> away from Ghostwriter stuff, I didn't care. So, 
I mean, there was that yeah, weird. I, I, didn't was, really... I guess in with introducing Ghost Rider, they're also bringing us into like the the mystical supernatural stuff, and there was that kind of weird ghost villain thingamajig that was happening. Yeah, I'm having trouble placing who that is. Like, I have no idea. Like with ghost Creel, thing? it was a little bit easier to tell it was Crusher Creel, but like with this, I have no idea. Yeah, supernatural stuff in Marvel is not my cup of tea. And she's green. I guess that's a hint. Yeah, yeah like I guess she, like she 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 kind of did something and made all the pe- those those um those gangsters or criminals kind of like rapidly age and decompose and die and attack each other and, like yeah yeah I which is apparently missed that part which is also something that happened on Gotham I'm sorry I said it out loud no <laughs> <laughs> the word it hurts my ears <laughs> I'm gonna go I'm gonna go uh what's it called just whip myself a few times <laughs> you 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 lashes. that's like so the, are we... like the albino from uh Da Vinci Code <laughs> so we we should probably talk about Gotham now, right? We have to. It's, well, it's like Andy and Hunter's There's mind. no escaping it. Yeah, me, uh, Connor, and I watched Gotham today. Let me, and... let me start. Start. Let me start. Okay, so Gotham this week we saw. Let's see, we saw Fish Mooney return from the dead. Jada Pinkett Smith, of course, who's married to Will Smith, who plays Deadshot in the Suicide Squad movie. Aren't Let's just divorced? have that sink in for a second. No, they aren't divorced. I'm pretty sure I remember them getting divorced. I, yeah, I think I that was a hoax, it. dude. Just like Jaden Smith killed himself, like, every year. <laughs> I mean, at what point does anything that starts from Gotham is a hoax or isn't real? Uh, oh, everything? <laughs> I wish it was a hoax or not real. I wish I would wake up and Gotham wasn't on TV. <laughs> How is it not canceled? Seriously, like who's yeah. out there watching? I don't know. It, right? Like Earl oh, always jumps oh, yeah. me about this. Uh, Earl always jumps me. He's like, "Oh, it's like one of the highest rated comic book TV shows on TV right now." I'm like, "How is that possible, though?" Because it's it was created. <laughs> it's <laughs> the EP is Bruno oh, Heller, who created The Mentalist, which was a great show on CBS. Here's my problem with Gotham, all right? It is written, like, so imagine there's a room, right? And in this room, there are events, and they put a bunch of writers in, in this room, and they just pour LSD through those vents, <laughs> and then they just tell them, write an episode of Gotham, and that's Gotham. Like, no, because that's, that's too, that's too broad. No um, Gotham, the way Gotham set up. my experience with Gotham for season one was listening to lines said out loud like this. <laughs> or at least something along these lines. Like, boy, Nigma, you like riddles. You're like some yep. riddle guy. <laughs> <laughs> like, almost I'm, I'm, as if expecting David Caruso from CSIMA to put his sunglasses on and walk off stage left. Like, you really like cats. So, we can name you. Yeah, you're like a cat girl. It's so fucking on the nose. <laughs> it's like, I, I, like, I routinely, routinely I refer to um, Gotham as Batman Muppet Babies. It is. And yes. Jim Gordon, Jim Gordon yeah, it, is the striped socks wearing nanny. Uh, this joke yes. I got from Laser Time. Chris Antisa said he said Jim Gordon is the striped socks wearing nanny, and everyone else around him just kind of gallivants around. Yeah, they just they just oh, do okay. things like there's no rhyme or reason to it. They just well, they, it's like the, first of all, there's a complete disregard for like I, the show is supposed to be. I was tricked into thinking it was a Batman sort of semi Elseworld prequel. Like this is what happens before he becomes Batman. Or like when small. he's young, before it's Gotham different. is like, I was tricked into believing it was a show about before Gotham gets as bad as it's supposed to be to necessitate a Batman. It's, it, but yeah. it's, the problem it's, is, it's, in this show's universe, Batman. Gotham is already full of fucking wackos and superpower people. Like, yeah, even like, if you created Batman, it still would not be Batman at this point at no, all. No, it's, it's just like, like it's just... Commissioner Gordon is now a um, bounty hunter on the loose. Um, who takes on dinosaur people? <laughs> okay, <laughs> let's let's um, let's let's talk let's... about the first two minutes of this episode, where a pharmacy technician is attacked by a goomba from the Mario Brothers movie. <laughs> <laughs> I I saw this shit first, of, and someone mentioned that yo Man Bat was in this episode. I'm like, is that him? I'm gonna oh, kill my yeah. It, that, that, that was me. Was, that was, was me. Like, that, that, I was like, yes, that is a Stegosaurus. It's, that wasn't a man bet. That was just some goth kid that was out in the sun too long. I, I didn't know. I, like, looked away for a second. I didn't know it was man bat. I was like, what the fuck? What? It was just yeah, a that. dude in all black that looks like Judge Doom from Roger Rabbit. And he had a cape. <laughs> I swear to God, this kid had a cape. Like, 
They gave him a I cape. Know, yeah, it looks like Dutch Doom from Roger Rabbit. He has a little like black trench coat with a little bit of thing on the back, and then he has a weird walk just like him. Yeah, he, he like hissing and shit. I, and ah, then fucking it, Valerie I'm Vale is like watching, yeah. watching Gordon hold him outside the window. Like, like this, the whole show is just I can't even explain the it whole, without. Gotham is and in Batman. The, meantime, the reference. That's all. Oliver it is. Gordon it's just Batman is references. Psychotic who apparently is running a club with this other psychotic person who works under Penguin and the um, sidekick character of Butch. What happened to Butch's hand? Yeah, wait, what happened to Butch's hand? Um, he got, what, I don't all. even know what happened. <laughs> <laughs> and I was watching last season. Oh, and you watched this show. Oh, yeah, Penguin, you, this is like you actually said you liked it. Off. Penguin cut it off. I don't remember why. Yeah. Wait, he cut it off and now they're best buds? Yeah. I wouldn't. But, I would not be. Fuck? I wouldn't be happy if sense. someone did that to me. Like, there's, there's just. I don't understand. It. Like, what is Fish Mooney supposed to be? Like, oh, who meta. is she? Like, I'm, she does not exist inside of the um, go, uh, Batman universe. She is a completely separate character that was introduced just for this show. Yeah, like, and what she's the over, fuck? and she has lasted way longer than I anticipated because while watching oh, season one, I was like, this can't. The first season, and then at the end like, of the second season, she came back. Oh, are you fucking kidding me? And I'm like, what the hell? Just let her die. Fish Mooney is like completely waste of a character. They could have introduced many, many villains as far as Falcone or Marconi as being the crime boss, which they actually did, but she's actually under him as the lieutenant, but she kills him or sends him off somewhere to a distant place, which makes You've no be kidding sense. Me. What? Wait, they the killed either Maroni or Falcone? Something like that. Like, oh, what the they just fuck? Disappear fuck this distance. show so hard. No, no, no. Like, they killed. Mar- they killed Maroni. In the Batman horror. like why call it Gotham? Why not call it um, CSI uh, Random Town USA? CSI Connecticut. Yeah, like. <laughs> well, at this point, the show is like, and uh, me and uh, Ed have had this conversation with Ed Bauman, who's in the group somewhere. Um, yeah. The show is basically Ed. like, it, it, yeah, what's up, Ed? Uh, the show is basically at this point like it, the the entire <laughs> pretense of it being a prequel to Batman is out the window. Now it's an Elseworld show. This is not. This is a. This is a alternate, completely what separate. What if? What if? It's what, a what, what? What if everything was terrible? I don't understand what the what if. Is. <laughs> yeah. What if? What if Batman what if did, just took a t- ton of LSD and then just if, uh, read Batman comics? What if everything what if about Batman among... sucked? No, what this if is a Batman. LSD and a typewriter. This is no. This is Gotham. Gotham Central, written by JT Kroll. Nothing at all. Ooh. I, no. No. And that's, I think, Ooh. everyone was expecting no, Gotham to be credit. Gotham Central, where it was basically going to focus on, it was going to be like a cop drama set in Gotham City, which is kind of cool, because being yeah. a cop in Gotham City sucks. Yeah, that's what I wanted. That's, that yeah, sounds good. Yeah, like, that's, yeah. that's what I wanted. You see Batman, like, you see him, like, in a corner somewhere being a spooky dude. That'd be great. No, or like, even a shadow, like a shadow. Or like yeah, you see his coat fly by. Well, it would, I think it basically do what he did in Supergirl season one, where like Superman's presence was, and they they right. kind of overplayed this hand where it's like my cousin, your cousin, this cousin. Um, right. His they, boots. I think it would have it would have worked a lot better. <laughs> yeah, his boot, his boots, and his cape, and a and a blurry shot of his face. Um, like you, you see I think it, I think that there. concept would have worked a lot better on Gotham, where it's like you don't ever actually see Batman, but his presence over everyone is felt because again. Being a cop in Gotham City must really suck because you're dealing with criminals who are one, they're out, they're outside the box of what a regular police officer would deal with, and two, like you're essentially, uh, like you operate second under Batman as far as how the city's like, you know how it all works basically because Batman rounds up all the really tough criminals, yeah, including just... the regular criminals. Yeah, yeah, and usually there's a fucking crocodile who eats people. Like it's a yes. shitty job. Yeah, like. Because... Gotham City is supposed to be like I think actually Tim Burton actually had a really good idea of what Gotham City was supposed to be. He said I think he described it in his his Batman script as if hell cracked open from the ground and just kept spreading upward. Like Gotham is the supposed to be the worst city in the world, which necessitates the idea of someone like Batman to show up and push back as hard as the city pushed. But then you know, that there's the whole escalation thing where like he pushes and then the city again pushes back and then we have the Joker. Um, but like this show you doesn't, this show uh, doesn't Gotham, offer any of that tension. Was, like, they had it phenomenal. They had it right. The kid deserves an Emmy for that Who's performance in that what two episodes. I think Who's it was. Yeah, he did a great job of nailing probably the hardest character there is in 
Batman. I think he did well. It's just like, it's like, I don't want that to be the Joker. They backtracked from him being the Joker, saying he's someone who inspires the Joker. Even that, like, once you start, and this is John Carpenter's uh, take on Michael Myers, like, he's a shape. He's not, you're not supposed to know anything about him. And as soon as you start putting in layers to Joker's origin like that and start giving identities and faces and this and showing him when he was young, you lose the mystique of what kind of a fucking monster he is because even the the offer origins in the comics are loose. Even he's like, I don't, I don't remember. That's how I feel about Gotham. Is, I don't know. I don't know how to explain it. It just... <laughs> <laughs> Somehow on TV, it shows up on my TV and I'm like, oh, that happens. That's for okay. a TV show. No sense it's in the two episodes before it. It's easily my least favorite, like, in terms of, like, DC TV, it's easily, like, the worst. Like, like, I don't even know if I'm still watching it. I just at am. This point, I think at this, at this point, we're all going to, I think, probably have to watch it at necessity for the show. But, like, if, if, if the show weren't a thing, I certainly wouldn't have watched that episode today. Yeah. It, it, it's First of all, it's, the only thing I like about it is Penguin. Like, that actor's really good. I like him. Yeah, um, Robin, even, though he's not really, even though he's not really Penguin, because Penguin was... I, don't recall him ever being a skinny uh, cripple. He's a gross little mutant. That's what he should be. Like, yes, yeah, he's a, he's supposed to be a horrid little pudgy man who you know, Danny DeVito manhandled. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> yeah, he's supposed to be nothing Danny against DeVito. Danny DeVito. He's supposed oh, well. to be fucking Frank Reynolds. Yes, <laughs> but yeah, this I don't know. This like this episode was just and then Fish Mooney has like superpowers and she can like drain people's life. Yeah, because life. they use the word the person that. The plot device for this episode said the, the word said the word abilities. No, someone. I, okay, again, back to how like I think the writing of the show is terrible. Someone at some point said just like, and it was it sounded like a rough draft. You need to not use your powers. <laughs> what? Yeah, it was right when like that 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 woman that uh, in her office when Man Bat showed up um, and Gordon was fighting him. That woman, when she gets kidnapped later by Mooney, they have a conversation about basically what's happening in Mooney's body and, I guess, why she needs all these drugs they're stealing. Um, uh, Hugo Strange's assistant. Or yeah, yeah. Um, which I can't believe they're using Hugo Strange already. Like, what about Hugo Strange, like, they nailed that it. it was uh, B.D. Wong. Um, yeah, from who's One in Order. Right now. No, I will say, even what? I heard him talk in the recap, and I immediately heard um, Arkham City, uh, oh, Hugo yeah. Strange. Yeah, he yeah. does a good job. I do think, like, there's some... He does a good job. I'm Massive flaws of this show. It does have some redeeming features, but not enough redemption to redeem this whole show. That's, and that, I, 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 you know, I ride this show like there's no tomorrow, and I can't even say like it's not all terrible. Um, I like the way it looks. Um, I kind of like it's like it sort of so over the top. It's I, love, the I will say I love Dono Logue as well, Harvey yeah, Bork. I think that's great, but like the, everything is just on top of itself. It's like. It just as a show, it just it seems like it's collapsing in on itself. I don't well because they were so desperate to like. It, it seems like every season, like we're gonna have Mister Freeze and we're adding Penguin and we're talking about adding Killer Croc and Harley Quinn and blah blah blah. I'm like, you can't keep you. Like, they keep straying further and further and further away from like where I think an even possible end game would be for this show. And I can't even think of where the show would go at this point because what what happens? Does Jim Gordon become Batman? Does Bruce Wayne grow up and become Batman? Does he just die and this becomes an official Elseworld show? They introduced Hush becomes Batman. Hush. Yeah. They introduced Hush, like, this past episode. And I'm just like, it's too damn early. Same thing Wait, with Court who? of Owls. Oh, Hush, you, yeah. You mean fucking Mowgli? He looks like fucking Mowgli from uh, yeah. The Jungle Book. Like, yeah. <laughs> the long hair. Yeah. They yeah, just Bruce gave Wayne, the worst Hush, wig. Yeah, Bruce Wayne has a doppelganger all of a sudden, even though he's, like, eight years old, and he came from, like, our, what was it, Indian Hills basement or some shit? I'm, I'm not yeah. even sure. Yeah, that's where all of them came from. Okay, that's where, that's where Goomba Man came from? Yeah. With, uh, I, ha- I, have, I have to touch on that one more time because it's... Holy it's, shit. <laughs> one more time because, okay, that scene happens and the, the whole thing goes down. He gets hit by a car. And then after he gets hit by a car, like, the pharmacy technician goes, like, makes a face of Gordon, like, eh, and then Gordon makes the same face back. And I'm like, eh, I expected something to go... Wah, 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 wah. Like, <laughs> They're like, it was... It was so weird, like, when he turned around and he saw, like, the spikes and stuff, I laughed. Like, <laughs> Oh, so did I. I laughed my ass off. Actually, the, and the point that made me laugh out loud, seriously, in that episode was, I think, at the end, and I don't know what triggered me to laugh, I think I just had enough, was when the, the uh, Assassin's Creed character shows up in the house um, oh. and, attacks, oh. and attacks Alfred. Like, he stood up, 
put his hand out, and the hidden blade came out, and I fell over. I, I don't know what happened. <laughs> I just started laughing and laughing and laughing. And I, but the like, thing I is, Talon I was, is I was not spiraling a... into insanity. Talon isn't even a villain. Talon? Wait, that was Talon? Yeah. Wait, this, be... doing... this is Court of Owl shit? Yeah. yeah, they're doing Court of Owls right now, as well as Hush. What the fuck is happening? Like... So hang on. By this logic, next season, is 16-year-old Bane going to show up and break 12-year-old Batman's back? <laughs> I would... Yeah. That would be awesome. Yeah, I, I'd I watch. Would, I'd watch the fuck out of that. Only if he has a Tom Hardy voice. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Wait, when does when does the CIA CIA agent come to Gotham? I it would be like... it would be a hall monitor. <laughs> oh, Cyclops? No, it's the uh, CIA agent from Dark Knight Rises. Instead of the CIA agent, he'd be a hall monitor. The yeah, entire yeah. Cyclops. Takes place in, like. It... <laughs> It would, take, it would take place in, like, the high, the high school bathroom or something like that. <laughs> Instead of pushing people out of planes, like, he's giving people swirlies. I can't think of, of one loyalty thing. for a hired bully. Of, like, I can't think of one thing out of the whole thing of Batman, like, the whole like, universe, all the different storylines that they could cover. They've touched on every single one, basically, Court of Owls, Hush, all that. The only one they haven't is basically... The Dark Knight Returns, the Frank Miller version, where Batman and Superman fight, which I assume we'll probably get in the next season. Oh, God. <laughs> I know. That's what's next. They just they just That's age up bad. Bat. They just age up Bruce Wayne to fifty five years old. Oh, it's like, can we talk oh, about Bruce yeah. Ivy? Yeah, we got to talk about that. Schoolyard. It's a uh, Superboy versus Batman, basically. Oh God! Like in the schoolyard. No, Wesley. not like, no, we, not Superboy. Metropolis Kid. Oh, oh yeah. Can you explain Poison Ivy for me? What happened? Cause yeah, I'm I can. Still I can explain this. Uh, Marv has a has the ability to age people up and that that and kill them. Oh, he, of course he does. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Because, no, no, because, no, oh. no. Stop. 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 Okay, you're telling me that he has the power, and I saw this power displayed. I'm not an idiot. He has the power to wither you into a carcass, and then you fall over. You're telling me he grabs Ivy and sexes her up by 20 years? Yeah, basically. Like 10, more like 10, but he grabs her tries and uh, tries to do his stuff. She falls into a uh, pipeline full full of water or a, a river. Uh, whatever. Fuck that is, oh. And she, that is she's going to emerge. Sexy. Of if they did a porn parody of Gotham, that would be how they got Ivy to the age where she could have sex. I'm pretty sure Gotham is a porn parody at this point. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the acting in it is kind of on, on par with that. Are we yeah. going to talk about what happened in the beginning of the episode with Leslie Tompkins? Wait, what? Wait. Oh. I just remembered the Goomba. I'm sorry. Uh, I was so I was uh, distracted by Dino Jim Man. goes down to Georgia or wherever he's going to see Lee, who yeah. left with the oh. kid that you were pregnant with. And now has a new husband apparently, and he was on the doorstep with some flowers, and then he saw him kiss another dude. So she's, he's like, "I'm out, peace, bitch." Yeah, it was like a weird plot thread. Like, and now, again, this is not a show I watched regularly, but like, it's like he, I was like, kid that I he helped, went down uh, there, like, had the flowers left, and it's like it's never spoken of again. And thing is, <laughs> she's not Time supposed table to. Is six months later, she's not supposed to leave Gotham. She's a key figure in Gotham. No, who is yeah, she again? But, Leslie Tompkins. Uh, is she? Medical examiner? Yeah, she, yeah, she's a oh, med okay. um, medical examiner for the GCPD. Oh. Well, I mean, we've already established the show doesn't give a flying fuck about uh, Batman canon, so... If that was the case, we wouldn't already have Harvey Dent and Mr. Freeze. Anyone else have anything else about, to say about this episode? I mean, aside I, from, like, the silliness... Oh, I want, my, I want my money back. Yeah. I want I want the three years the show's been on the air time back... I want Hulu I just, to give me my money back. I'm going to go on a small rant just about TV here for a moment. Like, I... Okay. Like, Hannibal gets canceled after three seasons. And... Oh, it's still a shame. And, what network was that? Uh, NBC. Uh, NBC. Yeah. Okay, it was on NBC. And this is, like, allowed to just truck on and just be as, like... I don't, I don't... Again, I guess it's got high ratings, so I guess that's what's keeping it on. But, like, I don't think high ratings have ever stopped the show from getting canceled before, has it? Was Firefly critically, like... Well, they aired that out of order. They had they shot pilot was the last episode shown. Yeah. Wait, what? That's weird. What? Yeah. yeah. Oh, they, so they just oh, so they fucked Firefly is what you're telling. Yeah. Me. They fucked it that right in the ass. 
And with Hannibal, they they started airing it on Thursdays. If you air it on Thursdays, you're not confident in the show. If you're confident, you put it on Monday or Tuesday. That's why Supergirl got Monday, because they thought that they would get high ratings from it. was that Friday is- night at 10 o'clock after Supernatural on Friday nights, and it was gone. And it was also on NBC, same thing as Hannibal. Um, and it was just gone after the first season, I guess. Wait, Which what show? show? Firefly? Constantine is what I'm talking about. Oh, oh, oh God, that's no. a tragedy. No, 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 that aired. My, my heart is still broken. That aired on at ten after Grimm. On it NBC. aired at ten. Yeah, well, it came on at ten. Part in where no one is home, everyone has lives. Well, except people that watch Constantine, of course. I, but, I, hey, but, okay, Constantine Hunter, is like. If you're a wrestling fan, um, you know what waste of TV is like. Yeah. Look, I know. Dude, I, I stopped watching. Okay, I'm not getting into this right now. Because <laughs> I'll go on a rant. Three hour raw. Anyway, um, no, like I, I can't believe like the, just everything I've seen from the show is like just is silly and stupid and overbearing and like like the the early Venom episode from season one where that dude actually says this toxin will be the bane of this city and then I got up from the couch and just walked into my room without saying a word. You know what, though? <laughs> my mom and stepdad love it. So. <laughs> There's I, your answer right there. Or, and like I said, Earl, Earl, my nemesis, uh, it says it's great all the time. And uh, Earl, you're wrong. I, He's just, talking about Gotham, right? Yeah, I can't. He says yeah, it's the best superhero show on TV. The best superhero show on TV. He sure doesn't have eyeballs. Hey, we can agree on one thing. We can all agree on this, this one fact: Gotham is better than Lucifer. I, I have not seen Lucifer. I have seen Lucifer, so I can't really speak to its merit. It's. But... A total bastardization of, of the series. By, I've never. By my are the character. comics good? Yeah, the comics are great. Great Vertigo series. Oh, that's great. I'll, I might pick up trades then before and I watch there's it. A current, I want... There's a current new series going on right now. Huh. Oh, yeah, with Lilith or whatever the fuck. His mom, whatever. All yeah. I know is from the. Oh, the, the commercials I see before I try to watch Funhouse. Anyway, do we want to move past Gotham and get into this little bit of news? Yeah, let's, yeah, let's, let's go just... for news. All right, I do have, like I said, this one item to talk about. I think this Warner CEO Jeff Buke says DC Films have room for improvement, and I'll just pull the quote right here. Uh, he said, I think, to, let me see, da, 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 uh, in Variety, we do think there's a little room for improvement. We can do a little better in the creative. The DC Comics characters have a little more lightness in them than maybe what you saw in those movies, so we're thinking about that, which is long-form executive speak for... Yes, you were all right. Our movies are not that good. They're not. Like, and this is coming from someone who didn't even fucking hate Batman vs Superman. And quite honestly, I don't really care what anybody says. No, I love Suicide right now, Squad. Or... I, Suicide Squad, despite all the problems it might have, I thoroughly enjoy Suicide Squad. But I can also <laughs> attest to the fact that it does have problems. These movies are inherently flawed, and I think a lot of it comes from the studio. And maybe like a lot of the blame can be put on Zack Snyder too. Okay, well, here's the problem with Zack Snyder. And, like, I actually don't hate Man of Steel anywhere near as much as, like, it's, it, a lot of people seem to. They're like, it's the worst movie ever. I'm like, it's really not that terrible. Like, it's kind of, like, it's half a good movie. It needs adjustment time. It definitely... Yes, yeah. and it's got, it's got like, pacing issues where, like, they're, you're yeah, jumping into a flashback before you're really it's aware seven. of it. And, like, they're and in the Jonathan whole... Kent. Jonathan oh. Kent is easily Jonathan, the biggest dick in the DCU. Jonathan Kent... Uh, committing suiciding via tornado um to save a dog to save a dog um yes. don't use your godlike powers to save this animal i'll just go in there and just you, you god god forbid you be a superhero it's all about me even though even though you are literally indestructible just every version of superman he's super fast but yeah not, apparently not i guess um zack snyder um is someone who okay zack snyder has not he's not the hack i want to say everyone thinks he is because I love 300. I love Dawn of the Dead. I really love Watchmen. The thing those movies all have in common is that they are all extremely violent, dark, rated R movies. Zack Snyder excels at one thing, and that is basically rated R content. It's because he loves it. And I think he's like basically on record saying he 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 got into comic books basically like around comics that were very graphic. Yeah, yeah movies and shit. Yeah. yeah. You French can't take and... yeah. You can't sure. take that tone the and put it problem with, with that, Superman. Superman exists in the light. He does not exist in darkness. If you want yes. darkness, 
Go to Batman. You also can't have an I, I thought I thought his Batman stuff was great in Batman vs Superman, except for the fact that he's right blue and red do not look good in dark. Blatantly darkness. made Batman kill people. Blatantly. What like well, in the in pe- previous movies like eh, he probably killed that guy. Okay, you know, very amb- it's ambiguous except when Batman returns when he straps dynamite to that guy's chest and kicks him into a sewer. Um okay. That was. Pr- <laughs> <laughs> in Batman the movie, the motion picture by uh, Tim Burton, doesn't Michael Keaton put a grenade into a guy's mouth and drop him? I think that was the. Does he? I think no. I. I remember hearing that. I think it was the second one, wasn't it? It's the second oh, one. That clown. One. That clown. Like he punches that clown, and then like, Batman like basically blinks. And the clown has, like, dynamite strapped to his chest. And then he, like, throws him into a sewer and, like, walks away and the sewer blows up, implying that he blew up, too. And I know basically in the first Batman movie, like, I think he drops a dude down the bell tower and then is essentially responsible for killing Joker because he did grappling hook him to a cement uh, gargoyle and watched him plummet to his death. In Batman vs. Superman, he's not, he, okay, this is the, the main problem, and I know this is, like, he's killing people, yes, but, like, I think Zack Snyder was trying to make it so he wasn't directly killing people. But at one point, he, like, fuck, he has machine guns mounted the Batmobile and, like, and shooting like, people. Blowing up cars, like, in the uh, in the extended version, he, like, grabs that, like, that cargo crate and, like, hurls at the one dude who hits the wall. And, like, there's just a streak of blood in the wall. I'm like, well, that guy's fucking dead. And if he's not, yeah. he's, he's basically there's brain dead. There's no sense of, I guess, the comics code, basically. Of what they had basically in the old days, where it had no this, no this, no this, no this, but you can have that. Like but, it's just free will, whatever. Like and again, you need the, to have some what sort I was of basically code to is that this is what happens when you take a guy who doesn't quite understand. Like Zack Snyder is good at lifting things off the page and putting them on screen almost verbatim, and that's like his mm-hmm. best talent. He's cool at visual stuff. Like I think the yeah. opening sequence of Batman vs Superman is breathtaking, and then yeah. the movie happened. Um, <laughs> Um, and he, he knows, he understands costumes, like, Batman suit is great. He understands, uh, just, like, movie and, like, footage and music. Like, he understands yeah. visuals and, compa- like, it's pretty to look at, but, like, then you get down to the nitty-gritty and you're like, this is, uh, it's so lopsided and the tone is off and, like, there's no fucking levity in this movie anywhere. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he, he's great it at just... making a looking lawn, but there's ants underneath and there's yes. fire ants and they're going to kill all of us. And that's why I think I think that's why he did so well with Watchmen because he didn't have to really write anything. He, he just he lifted essentially it. he he yeah. used storyboards for he used the comics as storyboards and just framed them around that. Like he it's like the closest way to adapt a comic book movie I've ever seen, barring the changing of the ending, which I think is actually better because the giant, giant, giant squid giant squid monster that took probably an extra thirty minutes of of movie time to develop would be weird, and I I didn't like it in the comics to begin with, and I like yeah, the it's idea. Just... Turning yeah, Doctor totally Manhattan weird. to the villain that everyone thinks you know they might have. I think Zack Snyder would be better off maybe directing like DC's darker stuff, maybe or something, something well, that like he... something smaller. Yeah, something smaller. Like I don't. That makes fun. Like, I feel like Jeff Johns being on board is a great thing, and I really hope he like he whips this dude into shape, or like even better, just completely Wasn't takes he over. Named, he was named president of DC Entertainment, right? Yeah. I, yeah. Yeah. So obviously he's going to have a say in things, but I also think someone, one of you mentioned studio involvement. I think that was the big thing that really ruined Suicide Squad. It's a it's a reaction to the last movie. So Marvel, even though they don't like to publicize this, they have a guy who's in charge of making sure all the movies look the, look alike, that they look the same, and that they're visually still pretty. That yeah, should be Zack but... Snyder's job. That's an easy. I job think he'd can... be amazing at that. Yeah. Like. As a he a consultant, yes, but the guy who's steering the ship, why? Why would you do that? Espe- especially like okay, Man of Steel happened like like I think it's like tomato score is like fifty ish. It was it's very middle of the road like and everyone it's talked divisive. to was like yeah it's ex- extremely polarizing and I think everyone I talked to said like oh, I like it. Some people were like I fucking hate it and it's like okay strike one. Batman vs Superman should have counted as two strikes because not only that did he okay. Yes. Also, if you make a movie called Batman vs. Superman, the first time these two characters have been on screen together in the movies ever, you are not allowed to fuck up. And there, you shouldn't... It should be impossible for you to fuck up. Exactly. there's so much there already that you can take from 
that you can just liberally steal from. You can just steal all of it and just put it there in front of us, and it will be great. I, I don't understand how you fuck it up. I, I don't. They could have just fixed everything if they would have just taken Dark Knight Returns and then made a little flip book out and then just recorded it on, on the screen for us. Zack Snyder is a big fan of Anne Rand- Randyism, or what, yeah. how do you pronounce that? Objectivism, that's what it's called. Objectivism, yes. Like, the question is a character who's based on be- objectivism. Zack Snyder's problem is that he's trying to bend it to his, his to his, what he wants. Like, he, he's not adapting it. He's kind of just... Well, he's just he's blowing asking... a theme at it and saying, look, I'm going to make movies around this with these characters and... Hopefully that'll work, and it's not and, working. And in doing so, he like he sucked all of like all of the fun out of the movie. Like Superman doesn't smile once; he mopes around and like. And the theatrical cut it blew me away when like the the Senate building explodes, and he just frowns and flies the fuck off like an asshole. Like he's like, oh well, and he just leaves. <laughs> oh, I really <laughs> fucked that up. <laughs> oh man, this is really a fucking this is a catastrophe. <laughs> like if that was an Elseworlds comic, right? It <laughs> was some artist. He's like, that's too Superman, but Anne Rand. That'd be great. That's fine. It's in Elseworlds. We can talk it's... about how <laughs> crazy and stupid it is, but fine. That's its own thing. It doesn't need to be our movie that everybody can see. Well, I mean, I've heard the argument, like, a darker DC universe is fine, but then you have, like, the weird shit, like Perry White being a complete madman. <laughs> yeah. Who, uh, who, who communicates with headlines... I'm not, favorite, like, like, not 1938 anymore. Clock, you can't write about superheroes. But, My favorite moment is still the bat coming out of that fucking coffin. That still pisses me off. Oh, yeah. that, that... You mean that Bat Christ? A... Wait, what? Bat Christ? <laughs> so, Wait, he just no, like, no, he's on the cross and like lift many, it out. Not when he levitates. When he has that nightmare on he, uh, where he goes to his mother's grave and the big oh, bat, with bat the bleeding pops wall? out. Yeah. He levitates with the bats out of the well. I thought that was... Okay. Look, I, that, I, I hate I'm a sucker for that kind of like visuals, but like I, I even at the time it felt off. Like, like I like that stuff usually. Very, just, like, very forced. It makes no sense at all to the movie. Yeah, it's like why are you well, doing it was also this? A, it was also a dream sequence too. So yeah. Oh, that's another problem. Is Zack Snyder? Zack Snyder is obsessed with dream sequences. He I does. He, he, he does blow his happen. his load seemingly. Like it even happened in Watchmen where um. The nuclear bomb happens, and that that whole sequence yeah. is like awesome to see. And I guess one of the coolest parts of Ben vs Superman is the nightmare sequence, which is so awesome. Which one? The parody. <laughs> but then Flash shows up, and it all falls apart. Um, Ugh. I'm too soon. Injustice. Injustice. <laughs> he leaves. But yeah, and then like, and then you get the Suicide Squad, which wasn't Snyder's fault really. But um, I don't even think it was yeah. David Ayer's fault. David Ayer see, right. I looked like David Ayer made a good yeah. movie that someone took into a room without his knowledge and cut it to pieces. Yeah, it's the studio wanting them to make it more humorous, I guess, is what I believe the reshoots were that happened after it was com- and, supposedly done. For me. That's weird, because I laughed twice. <laughs> it, both, it's, times, it's, both times were Jai Courtney, because he was amazing as Captain Boomerang. When he yeah, drops but, the, the unicorn, I kind of chuckled. Uh, I, I was really like, what when, the fuck I, am I watching? I really enjoyed when um he, uh, Rick Flagg was like, you can all go, and he just like, he, he like, just ducks. Like, he's just like, I'm out! <laughs> Oh, then someone, I, okay. someone pointed out to me that actually that there's a joke to that where he leaves. Boomerangs and always come back. He, yes, he boomerangs. He came yeah. right back. But I thought even I, but despite the problems with Suicide Squad, there was one moment, and I think I've, I've talked about this in in Pop Slam and elsewhere. There was one moment in Suicide Squad, two moments really, that I thought were utterly brilliant, and not even Marvel has done this because Marvel sucks at music lately. Um, the opening the opening sequence of Batman vs Superman has the music "Beautiful Lie" and it's all in slow motion. It's snowy, blah blah blah. The Wayne family dies, like we've seen a hundred times. And we Wait. have in Suicide Squad. Oh god, what? I have a real problem with how the Wayne fan, the Wayne Martha and, and Thomas went out. You mean how it was very Zack Snydery, where Thomas Wayne was like, "I'm gonna fight you," and then he gets shot. It doesn't even look like he's trying to protect his family. It looks like he's trying to start a fight. <laughs> he just kind of runs up to him. Like he falls with a fist immediately. Like like, it could be interpreted as like it could be interpreted as like I would literally fight you and die for my family. But the the you know the presentation is what's important there. Yeah, like. But anyway, yeah, like Max uh, Max Landis, there was a video he did with Max Landis is my personal hero. I like him. That's a different. Conversation. I like his stuff, not his 
personality, but I won't go into it. But yeah, Alan, go ahead. He was joking, he was criticizing Zack Snyder, saying, It's Joseph Campbell, right? The hero with one face. That face Leonid- is Leonidas. Very true. <laughs> um, well, but anyway, um, I'm basically saying how getting killed like a for nothing is better than living and getting mugged or something. I don't know. It's, it, it's, I, don't know. I, I, I still like the beginning of Ben vs. Superman. I think it's beautiful. Uh, this, I this is disagree. me even more. Because it this didn't need to be that. Well, and this is why I'm bringing it up. Um, and uh, this is my this is my one of my favorite, I guess, comic book movie connections where you're implying a larger universe. And I don't think it's been done in Marvel before. Where, like I said, you had the Wayne Fame murder, and there was the music by Hans Zimmer. It's called Beautiful Lie, and it's got that very uh, particular to- tune. Well, and then you get to the alley sequence in Suicide Squad where Batman confronts uh, Deadshot. And it's almost like a parallel. And they even use the same music. It's kind of altered, and it's a situation where it's snowy, you're in an alley, uh, and there's a gunman, and no one dies. It was yeah. like the most uplifting part of the movie. I was like, this is awesome. And then they it's took like that... Great parts. Then they took, just that, they took that music from like Beautiful Lie and the tragedy of the Waynes family, and they actually just like repurposed it into Deadshot's theme. And then later in the movie, when he hops on top of that car and goes the best killing spree in movies I've ever seen, um, and that music plays again, I was like, this, I like this movie. DC has the great the greatest heroes ever to be in comics, but they can't make it good. And that just irritates me to no it's, end. It's, to me, it's just Warner Brothers is just, just fucked up completely by not... Warner Brothers wants another Dark Knight, and they can't have it. Yeah, yeah. basically. I, not to say I think it, I said this... In, oh, in which way to blame nobody, Christopher Nolan really kind of, in again, not to blame him, really ruined the path for superhero movies from Warner Bros. going forward because he took Batman and made it, you know, pretty dark, uh, grounded and kind of grim and kind of bleak. Um, and Warner Brothers only examined that. They said, wow, yeah. bleakness, this is this is perfect. Marvel's so lighthearted and this, we can be grim and dark and against the grain and then Superman doesn't smile and Batman kills people. There's one movie that kind of is the, re- is the result or it led to this. Green Lantern. Yes. Oh, uh, uh, I forgot that movie existed. Uh, I own that on DVD. I've never watched the whole really? thing. I watched about 30 I, minutes of it. I was bored to death. I've seen it three times, and each time it doesn't get better. It just, yeah. it just sits. It's I can't just, get past oh, this. I can't get past this. On TV suit, as well. like, suit looks so damn corny. He looks like a battery, kind of. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he does. Well, and like, first of all, when you overly rely on CG, looking at you, George Lucas, um, uh, it ages like milk. Like, two years later, you're like, that looks like shit. Next time on The Phantom Zone, we recap the DC TV Arrowverse next week. Till then, I will find him! <laughs> <laughs>